One incident that I remember is um, breaking my foot on my birthday and it was swollen and bruised. So I took some duct tape and duct taped my foot, put on a boot, so I just continued on with my day. My name is Stephen Pete and I was born unable to feel pain. My parents realized I couldn't feel pain when I was a toddler and chewed off half of my tongue. They then took me to a doctor and the doctor ran a series of tests to confirm that I had this condition. My name is Jeff Woods. I have two jobs. I'm a clinical geneticist at Addenbrooke's Hospital, working for the NHS, and my other half job is I'm an academic in the University of Cambridge, Department of Medical Genetics. Congenital insensitivity to pain has been a disorder people have known about for a long time, but not everyone believed it existed. When we investigated children and families who had congenital insensitivity to pain, what we found was that all of the families had mutations in one gene called SCN9A. It's an interesting molecule because we never expect that a single molecule would control all pain felt in humans. So how does it do it? It seems that SCN9A sits on very specific neurons in your body, and those are the neurons which actually sense pain. You have to be hypervigilant in your day-to-day -day task to avoid causing serious injury to yourself. If you're unable to feel the pain from an injury, then you need to know how to detect the injury in another way. At a young age, we tend to say ouch whenever we bump into something, just as a way to inform ourselves that there may have been something that may have caused an injury. Wearing a helmet similar to this is a, a great tool for uh, parents who have children with this condition to keep their heads safe um, because at a young age, like myself, I would like to bang my head against the wall because I like the feeling of the vibration. To test Stephen to see if he's got congenital insensitivity to pain caused by SCN9A, all I need to do is get a blood sample from him. Then in the DNA laboratory back in Cambridge, we'll extract the DNA and we'll sequence all the exons of the SCN9A gene, like we're reading chapters of a book and we're looking for spelling mistakes. Talking to Stephen, it's very clear he doesn't feel pain, he has no sense of smell, his intelligence is normal, he can temperature sense. Therefore, the clinical diagnosis is congenital insensitivity to pain. I therefore expect to find two mutations in his SCN9A gene, one of which he came, got from his father, one from his mother, and I'd expect both of those mutations to deactivate the gene from working properly. If you could block SCN9A in a person who is feeling pain, say from a broken bone or from an operation, you should be able to completely block all their pain without any side effect that matters. The fact that this specific genetic mutation could be used to help people who are in extreme cases of pain is quite exciting.